It's nighttime in the big city. Thunder echoes through the streets. A man rents a hotel room under an assumed name. It's theme time radio hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Theme Time Radio Hour. We play a lot of jazz singers on the show, perhaps none as much as Donna Washington, but sometimes the great soloists who play with an artist like her go unappreciated. In the background is a long tenor saxophone solo from a live recording by Donna Washington. The saxophone player's name is Harold Land, and like many great horn players, he came from Texas. He moved to Los Angeles and played with both of the Liggins brothers, starting off with Jimmy's band and then going with the more famous Joe Liggins, who had a lot of hits with songs like The Honey Dripper and Pink Champagne. Harold got out of the IMB world when Clifford Brown took Max Roach to hear Harold play at a session Eric Dolphin was holding. It was pretty esteemed company, but Harold rose to the occasion. Max Roach loved what he heard, and he and Clifford invited him to join the band. Los Angeles for many years and performed with many great artists like the one you're about to hear, Dinah Washington and Don That Dream. Just to change the mood I'm in Lord, I'd welcome a nice old nightmare Don that dream And bless it too Without that dream I never would have you But it haunts me Cause it won't come true was Donna Washington and Don That Dream. In 
Every week we tell you that we specialize in dreams, themes, and schemes. Every week we play a theme. The show itself is kind of a scheme. Well, that leaves one subject left. Now this week, we're going to be looking at that series of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. That's right. We're going to be listening to songs all about the little movies that play in your head in the dead of night. We'll be talking about dream jobs, lucid dreams, the American dream, tangerine dream, the dream walking, dream boats, pipe dreams, dream catchers, and dream machines. So find yourself a comfortable place, put your sleep mask on, close off the rest of the world, and stay tuned. Next up, Don and Phil, the Everly Brothers. This is part of their phenomenal three year string for Cadence Records. All I have to do is dream. The Everly Brothers. Dream. the Everly Brothers, all I have to do is dream. I got to hear that intro again. Can we hear that text? That's the great Chet Atkins on guitar, playing those tremolo chords. He is probably the most recorded solo instrumentalist in music history. He recorded with everybody. Les Paul, Dolly Parton, Skeeter Davis, Waylon Jennings. He built RCA's Studio B, probably the most hit-generating studio in Nashville. He lived for the music, and at one time said, Years from now, after I'm gone, someone will listen to what I've done and know I was here. They might not know or care who I was, but they'll hear my guitar speaking for me. We hear you, Chet. According to the Talmud, a dream which is not interpreted is like a letter which is not read. We'll be talking about all sorts of dream analysis during today's show. Napoleon Bonaparte dreamt of conquering the world. People riding the Titanic dreamt of a safe trip across the ocean. Texas Ranger slugger Jose Canseco dreamt of becoming a pitcher. He pitched the eighth inning of a blowout game in 1993 and blew out his elbow. He had to have surgery, costing him his regular job in the outfield. Many people have dreams that go bust. Here's a song just for them. It's the song that Mitch Miller heard Tony Bennett do a demo of, and it's what got Tony signed to Columbia. 
Here he is, Tony Bennett, singing the Al Dubin Harry Warren song, The Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I walk along the street of sorrow, the boulevard of broken dreams. Where Gigolo and Gigolette can take a kiss without regret, so they forget their broken dreams. You laugh tonight and cry tomorrow when you behold your shattered scheme. Gigolo and Gigolette wake up to find their eyes are wet with tears that tell of broken dreams. Here is where you'll always find me. But I left my soul behind me In an old cathedral town The joy that you find here you borrow You cannot keep it long, it seems Gigolo and Gigolette still sing a song And dance along the boulevard of broken dreams Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Tony Bennett, here on Theme Time Radio Hour. Langston Hughes always had something interesting to say, and in this case, he has a few words about today's subject. Here's Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, Life is a barren field frozen with snow. Langston Hughes, Dream Poet. Sometimes you're in the middle of a dream and you actually know you're dreaming. There's actually a name for that. It's called lucid dreaming. It usually begins partway into a dream when the dreamer realizes that the experience they're having is not occurring in physical reality. The quality of this lucidity can vary greatly. There are dreams where you know you are dreaming, and there are dreams you forget immediately. Otis Redding has a song about dreams that he wants to remember. Here's Otis from a record that was released posthumously in 1968. I've got dreams to remember. Mr. Soul, Otis Redding. I've got dreams, dreams to remember. I've got dreams. Honey, I saw you there last night Another man's arms holding you tight Nobody knows what I feel inside All I know, I walked away and cried I've got dreams Dreams to remember Listen to me I've got dreams I've dreams Just a friend But I saw him kiss you again and again 
Redding, I've Got Dreams to Remember, from the immortal Otis Redding, a record released after the December 10th, 1967 plane crash in Madison, Wisconsin, that took the life of Otis and four members of his backup band, the Bar Kays. Our Wi-Fi is down, so we can't check our email, but luckily we can take these phone calls. Is that right, Tex? Let's see who's on the phone. Oh, we got Elvis Costello on the phone. Hey, Elvis. Hey you listening to the show? Oh, man. I never stopped listening to it. What's up? Hey, Bob, I can't believe you're doing a show about dreams and not playing Beautiful Dreamer. You know, Beautiful Dreamer, waken to me. Starlight and dewdrops, waiting for thee. You know that one? Come on, Elvis. I don't have to play another version, not after you just sang it. But it does give me a chance to talk about Stephen Foster for a moment. Thanks for calling, and I'll see you soon. See you, Bob. Say hi to Diana and the twins for me. Although he wrote many songs about the South, Stephen Foster spent most of his life in Pennsylvania. He moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he became a bookkeeper for his brother's steamship company. By the way, bookkeeper is the only word in the English language with three sets of double letters in a row. Double O, double K, double E. But I digress. Getting back to Stephen Foster, he was a guy who had a dream. His dream was that he could make a living writing songs. Due to copyright laws in those days, it was an almost impossible ambition. Although he wrote many famous songs, including Camp Down Races, Swanee River, My Old Kentucky Home, and Hard Times, he was unable to earn a living. The only money he would make would be from printed editions. But as soon as someone would put out a popular song, other publishers would copy it. For instance, for the popular song, Oh Susanna, he received a sum total of $100. He moved to New York City in 1860, where his fortunes continued to decline. He passed away on January 13th, 1864, at the age of 37, but he left behind a beautiful body of work that is still sung today. Stephen Foster, Poet of Dreams. This is Theme Time Radio Hour. Your dreams are our dreams. There are certain voices that in themselves are dreamlike. For example, Roy Orbison. His voice was so dreamy that he recorded an entire album of songs about dreams. This one was rediscovered by David Lynch in 1987 and became the soundtrack from one of the most memorable scenes from his audacious and erotic film, Blue Velvet. In dreams, I talk to you. In dreams, you're mine. 
Here's the song that kept going through Dennis Hopper's head as he portrayed Frank Booth, the Sandman, Roy Arbison. A candy-colored clown they call the Sandman Tiptoes to my room every night Just to sprinkle stardust and to whisper Go to sleep, everything is all right I close my eyes Then I drift away Into the magic night I softly say A silent prayer Like dreamers do Then I fall asleep to dream Roy Arbison in Dreams. From Roy's description, it doesn't sound like the most common dream I've ever heard. Here are some more common dreams. Being chased or attacked, being injured, ill or dying, a car or other vehicle trouble, house or property loss or damage, poor test or other poor performances, falling or flying, being naked in public or inappropriately dressed, missing the boat or other transport machine or telephone malfunction, sex, natural or man-made disasters, being lost or trapped, being menaced by the dead or a spirit. These are the most common dreams, as opposed to candy-colored clowns. The word nightmare is from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning to crush. It dates back to an old English belief that witches or other supernatural beings were responsible for this chest crushing. This word turned into nightmare, literally the crusher in the night. And these feelings that witches or supernaturals were sitting on your chest are the result we now find of sleep paralysis. Let me tell you a little bit about it. When you dream, a group of cells in the medulla descend down the spinal cord and inhibit motor activity. This renders the body virtually paralyzed while the brain is active. Well, this is good. Otherwise, if you dreamt about boxing, you might punch the person sleeping next to you. That never goes over well. In sleep paralysis, your body remains paralyzed even as the brain begins waking up. This can be incredibly disorientating. Your brain tries to make sense of why you can't move. This is where the idea that supernatural beings were pinning you down as many as 40% of the people in the world have experienced sleep paralysis at least once. If you experience it only once or every night, it is truly terrifying. It is certainly the stuff of weird nightmares. 
Here's one of the great figures in jazz with one of his earliest recordings, a ballad that he wrote when he was trying to emulate his idol, Duke Ellington. Here's Charlie Mingus, Weird Nightmare. Weird Nightmare You haunt my every dream with Nightmare Tell me what your scheme Can it be that you're apart Of a lonely, broken heart With nightmare Must you torment me With nightmare There's a pain and misery In a heart that's loved and lost Take away the grief it's caused Can't sleep at night Turn twist in fright With the fear that I'll live it all again In my dreams You're there to haunt me When you say she doesn't want me I've been hurt or do you know what that means? This nightmare Take away this dream you've gone with nightmare Mend the heart that's torn And has paid the cost of love a thousandfold Bring me a love with a heart of gold <laughs> Charlie Mingus, with a song he wrote featuring the great Willie Smith on alto, Lucky Thompson on tenor, Lester Young's brother Lee on drums, and Claude Trenier, who had the R&B group The Treniers, Weird Nightmare. There must be something about dreams that spur the horror writer's imagination. For example, Mary Shelley was inspired to write Frankenstein by a dream. Robert Louis Stevenson got the idea for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in a dream. A lot of famous things happened during dreams. Abraham Lincoln dreamt about his own assassination. And Frederick August Kekulé, who was a remarkable figure in the history of organic chemistry. He once had a dream about a snake biting its own tail. From that dream, he figured out the structure of benzene. I would have just figured it was a sex dream or something. Here's the Feaster Brothers, Carl and Claude, along with their buddies, James Edwards, James Keyes, and Floyd McRae. I always make a point, whenever possible, to give the names of vocal groups, because all too often, they're just given as a collective noun, like in this case. We talk about the chords. You've heard them played on oldies shows, on Roots of Rock shows, but no one ever gives them a moment as individuals. So for James, Carl, Claude, the other James, and Floyd, Here's their big hit in 1954. Uh, they wrote it, by the way. It wasn't even supposed to be the hit. You know, Jerry Wexler, who was their A&R guy, had them record this Patty Page song, Cross Over the Bridge, but the buying public wasn't having it. They turned it over and found this on the B-side. Listen carefully to the saxophone solo. A lot of the guys that play horn on these records have deep jazz roots. And if you listen to the beginning of this solo, you can hear the sax player quote the standard, Mean to Me. Here are the chords with Shaboom. <laughs> 
Life could be a dream. Life could be a dream. Life could be a dream. Do, 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 shaboom. Life could be a dream. Shaboom. If I could take you up in paradise up above. Shaboom. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love. Life could be a dream. Sweetheart, hello, hello again. Shaboom, and open my meat again. Boom, ding dong, 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 ding Life could be a dream If only all my precious plans would come true If you would let me spend my whole life loving you Life would be a dream, sweetheart Every time I look at you Something is on my mind If you do what I want you to Maybe we'd be so fine That was the chords and shaboom. Life could be a dream here on Theme Time Radio Hour. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. In ancient Egypt, dreams were thought to be messages from the gods. When a person was having troubles and wanting help from their god, they would sleep in a temple. The next morning, a priest would interpret the night's dreams. The Greeks began seriously considering dreams in 8th century BC. Modern dream interpretations started in 5th century BC when the Greek philosopher Heraclides suggested that a person's dream was something they created in their own mind. The Romans brought out the idea that dreams are unique to the dreamer. In the 19th century, more pieces fell into place. Alfred Maury, who was a French doctor, introduced us to modern dream interpretation. He was the one who put forth the theory that external stimulus affected our dreams. If you want to remember your dreams, here are some tips. Maintain consistent sleep habits. When you go to bed, tell yourself you will remember your dreams. Repeat, I will remember my dreams as you drift off to sleep. I know it sounds weird, but studies have shown that people who want to remember their dreams are better at remembering their dreams. Keep a pad and pencil next to your bed so you can jot down notes about your dream. In that way, you'll be able to remember your dreams. You might want to stockpile them because there might come a time in your life when you stop dreaming. And when that time comes, you can listen to the Leuven Brothers. When I stop dreaming, that's when I stop loving you. The worst that I Like a flower unwanted 
in the shadows of undying pain. When I stop dreaming, that's when I'll stop thinking of the Leuven brothers when I stopped dreaming. We told you about Ivory Leuven and his hair trigger temper and how he got in a little dust up at the Opry. Here's some more facts. He ruined the tour with the young Elvis Presley who was a devoted Leuven brothers fan. Ivory called Elvis an ugly name and he said his music was rock and roll trash. Way before Pete Townsend, he broke his instrument on stage. Audiences didn't know how to react to an angry drunken man smashing his mandolin. According to people who knew him, he was the kind of drunk who looks and acts possessed. His brother Charlie said, Today they call it an illness. In those days, it was just being mean. Shortly after the Lubin brothers broke up in 1963, Barbara had a huge alcohol-fueled fight with Faye, his third wife, who tried to strangle her with a telephone cord. She shot him five times, but I guess he was too honorary to kill. He continued performing with his fourth wife, Anne Young. The two of them were performing in Kansas City in June of 1965. They were both killed in a car crash by a drunken driver in Williamsburg, Missouri. Ira Lumen died with a warrant out for his arrest on DUI charges. The Lumen brothers recorded many songs about alcohol. It's a shame that Ira Lumen's life could be the subject of one of the saddest. Hello, this is Jenny Lewis, and you're listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. So far, we've talked about dreams that happen at night. Well, those aren't the only kind. Sometimes during the day, you can just sit back and your attention can wander. Your mind can roam free. And you can think about, well, you can think about almost anything. Here's John Sebastian and the Levin Spoonful, who, by the way, got their name from the same place as the English rock band 10CC. Here's the Levin Spoonful and Daydream. What a day for a daydream. What a day for a daydreaming boy. And I'm lost in a daydream. Dreaming about my bundle of joy. And even if time ain't really on my side It's one of those days for taking a walk outside I'm blowing the day to take a walk in the sun And follow my face on somebody's new mode law I've been having a sweet dream I've been dreaming since I woke up today It's starring me in my sweet dream Cause she's the one makes me feel this way And even if time is passing me by a lot I couldn't care less about the dues you say I got Tomorrow I'll pay the dues for dropping my load A pie in the face for being a sleepy bulldog You may be daydreaming for a thousand years What a 
day for a daydream Custom made for a daydreaming boy Now I'm lost in a daydream Dreaming about my bundle of joy That was Jan Sebastian and the Love and Spoonful Daydream. Joan seems to be coming quietly through these difficult years, but the stress and strain are there and result in an almost complete withdrawal from people. She does a lot of daydreaming, imagining herself as the extrovert that she is not. Back when I was going to school, you'd see kids daydreaming, or sometimes not paying attention, running around, or acting impulsively. I always thought that was being a kid. Nowadays, everybody's got attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. They say it's hyperactivity, impulsivity, and all sorts of other things. I'm sure there are kids with real problems, but quite often, I'm sure there's cases people just didn't want to pay attention. I see parents not wanting to spend time with their kids, and for them not paying attention, or being bored, or acting impulsively, is the kid's problem. I don't think so. Spend time with your kids. You might find they don't have ADHD. They have other needs. A need to see their parents. I'll tell you something. I didn't pay a lot of attention, and I was known to daydream in class. Things turned out pretty good for me. I'd be the first to agree with you. Sometimes medication is necessary, but maybe we're all in too much of a hurry to treat things chemically and not look at what the real problem is. Sometimes there's not even a problem there. At least one that couldn't be solved with a little bit of patience, attention, care, and love. I don't mean to get up on my soapbox. Luckily, I don't have anything to say about this next record, so I can just shut up and play it. I could tell by the sound of it that it's a Jamaican record. I don't have any other records by these guys. I have no idea where they came from or where they went. I just know it's a great record. Here are the cherry pies and do you keep on dreaming? Was Do You Keep On Dreaming by the Cherry Pies. You're listening to Theme Time Radio Hour. Started off as a pipe dream, but now it's a reality. You ever hear of Aunt Sally's Policy Player's Dream Book? Well, it's a book of hoodoo magic for gambling luck. 
at Sally's Dream Book was first published in the 1890s and it linked dream images, prophecies, such as you'll receive a letter or beware of a stranger, and also gave numbers that corresponded to the images. For instance, if you dreamt of a train, you might get the string of numbers 27, 41, 16. These lucky numbers could be used for plain policy, an illegal lottery once popular in the black community. Some blues musicians, when performing live, would substitute Aunt Sally's code numbers for key words in their lyrics. So if the song mentioned a judge, they might sing 28, 50, 70. This was an inside joke for the hipsters in the crowd. It brings to mind a song by Big Bill Brunzi, all about a dream he had on his mind. Here's William Lee Conley Brunzi. It was a dream, just a dream I had on my mind. It was a dream, just a dream I had on my mind. And when I woke up, baby, not a thing could I find. I dreamed I went out with an angel and had a good time. I dreamed I was satisfied and nothing to worry my mind. But it was a dream, just a dream I had on my mind. Oh, then when I woke up, baby, not an angel could I find. I dreamed I played policy and played the horses too. I dreamed I win so much money, I didn't know what to do, but it was a dream. Just a dream I had on my mind. Oh, then when I woke up, baby, not a penny could I find. Play it, man. I dreamed I was married and started a family. I dreamed I had ten children and they all looked just like me. But that was a dream, just a dream I had on my mind. Oh, and when I woke up, baby, not a child could I find. That was Big Bill Brunzi, just a dream on my mind. Here on Theme Time Radio Hour. Well, the email's down, but, uh, you know, we get letters here, too. So let's open one up. All right. This letter's from Bruce Larson, and he writes this from Montevideo, Minnesota. He writes, Dear Bob, really enjoy the show. I'm glad you're playing so much jazz stuff lately. So many people find it difficult to find their way into this kind of music, and you playing it with other types of music is really helpful. I was wondering if you knew who replaced Illinois Jacquette in Lionel Hampton's band. Keep on swinging, Bruce Larson. Well, you're not going to catch me on such a simple question. Lionel Hampton had a big hit, well, big for jazz circles, with his song Flying Home. One of the reasons that song was so popular was because of the tenor saxophone solo. It was great on the record, but especially when played live, people could hear the birth of rock and roll. Matter of fact, Illinois Jacquet got so much acclaim, he was able to go off on his own and start his own band. Hap found another tenor player from Houston, Texas, and brought him aboard, and his name was Arnett Cobb. He became a solo artist as well, but when he joined Hap, he had to play Jacquet's solo, note for note. Here's Arnett Cobb, from a little bit later on, when he was leading his own band, during a song written by Oscar Hammerstein and Sigmund Romberg. 
when I grow too old to dream. Arnette Cobb, When I Grow Too Old to Dream. Arnette was in a terrible car crash in 1956, and he had to use crutches for the rest of his life. It didn't affect his playing, however. His full sound and deep sense of swing were unaffected, as was his personal style. I went to see him one time, back in the early 60s. He was playing a jazz club. He came out. You could tell it was painful. He moved slowly on his crutches, but as soon as the band started playing, it was like he was able to dance. As a matter of fact, at one point during his solo, he saw a girl at the front table take out a cigarette. For those of you who've never been to New York jazz clubs, the front tables are just about right on the stage. Well, I and that Cobb saw this beautiful girl take out a cigarette and finish playing his solo with one hand. With his other hand, he fished in his pocket, pulled out a cigarette lighter, leaned over, and lit her cigarette without missing a beat. Where is that sense of style nowadays? I ran into Mary Ann Faithful at Dunkin' Donuts. She had an old-fashioned powdered and had a quiller. This is what she had to say. Well, Bob, I believe that uh, a lot of the things that happen in your life, you can work them out in your dreams. And that there's that wonderful line from Hamlet about um, to die, to sleep, and perchance to dream. I can't remember the whole quote, where it's something about all the strands of everything that has unraveled during the day is knitted back together in your dreams, in your sleep. And I actually believe that. Thanks, Mary Ann. Here Tom Waits captures that drunken seasick lurch that dreams sometimes have while he bemoans the real world. From the album Frank's Wild Years, here's Innocent When You Dream. It's such a sad old feeling 
stealing But you're in a thun when you dream When you dream You're in a thun when you dream When you dream You're in a thun when you dream was Innocent When You Dream by Tom Waits here on Theme Time Radio Hour where our dreams are our ticket out. You just had a bad dream. Sure. Remember me? Your old pal, Hunk? Oh. <laughs> me? <laughs> Hickory? You couldn't forget my face, could you? But it wasn't a dream. It was a place. And you, and you, and you, and you were there. Oh, <laughs> Let's end things with a poem by William Butler Yeats. Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, inwrought with golden and silver light, the blue and dim and dark cloths, of night and light and the half-light, I would spread the cloths under your feet. But I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. William Butler Yeats. Emerald Poet. There seems to be nothing left to say after hearing something like that. So we'll see you next week. And let me just remind you, let your dream devour your life, not your life devour your dream. See you next week. Dream on. Thanks for listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Produced by Eddie Gorodetsky. Associate producer, Ben Rollins. Continuity by Eats Martin. Editor, Damian Rodriguez. Supervising editor, Rob McCumber. Research team, Diane Lapson and Bernie Bernstein. Additional research by April Hayes, Callie Gladman, Terrence Michael, Sean Patrick, and Lynn Sheridan. Librarian, Robert Bauer. Production coordinator, Debbie Sweeney. Production assistance by Jim McBean. Special thanks to Randy Azradi, Coco Shinomiya, and Samson's Diner. For XM Radio, Lee Abrams. Recorded in Studio B in the historic Abernathy building. Studio engineer, Tex Carbone. This has been a Great Water Park production in association with Big Red Tree. This is your announcer, Pierre Mancini, speaking. Tune in again next week when the subject is party.